Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, we've officially entered clown world once again. And guess who's spearheading the movement? None other than the TikTok genius herself, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, another call to action, a call to protest. As we know with these leftoids, and especially these far leftoids, they're always focused on society's most important things. You know, we're facing things like the fentanyl crisis, where over 100,000 people died from drug overdoses in 2022. We're seeing an epidemic of gang violence in the inner city, another crisis of epic proportion that's affecting young black life the most. And you would think that we'd be hearing Democrats say something. No, of course not. You know exactly where this is going. Democrats are focused on some obscure case that just happened in the New York City City subway, Democrats are focused on glorifying yet again another criminal, spreading mis- and disinformation about the subject, pretending he's a victim, and of course sowing discord in society. In other words, up to the same old, same old, the same old shenanigans. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on here. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so take a look at the streets of New York. <laughs> Protests emerge on the streets of New York City, the same type of black-clad leftist Antifa goons, covering their faces like cowards per usual, at least some of them. Another leftist hero has emerged, another great victim of systemic racism. His name is Jordan Neely. This individual passed away after being put in a chokehold on the subway, I believe two days ago as I'm recording this video. And of course, while it's tragic that anybody loses their life, guess what? Leftist activists aren't exactly being honest about what's going on here. Here's where Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez comes in. She writes on her Twitter, Jordan Neely was murdered. <laughs> here's your words, hey, hey, here's your hey. words. I was murdered. You were murdered. Okay. But because Jordan was houseless and crying for food in a time when the city is raising rents and stripping services to militarize itself while many in power demonize the poor, the murderer gets protected with passive headlines plus no charges. It's disgusting. Now, first of all, I have no idea what raising rent costs have to do with homeless people, at least not mentally ill, drug addicted homeless people. I mean, they're not paying rent no matter what you do, no matter what the cost is. But what AOC is doing here is frankly straight up evil and completely off base with reality, she continues. It is appalling how so many take advantage of headlines. Crime for an obsolete, tough on crime political media and budgetary gain. But when a public murder happens, they reinforce existing power structures. Those same forces rush to exonerate and look the other way. We shouldn't. So if you were to purely get your information from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you would think the facts of this case are that a black homeless man named Jordan Neely was simply indiscriminately murdered in the subway system. Well, not exactly. In fact, of course not. Here's what really happened from a local news broadcast. The video shows three strap hangers subduing the 30-year-old man after witness Juan Alberto Vasquez says he got on the northbound F train and began acting aggressively, threatening riders. Law enforcement sources with knowledge of the case confirm his account, saying according to a witness, the man began shouting, quote, I want food. I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm ready to go back to jail, and I'll hurt anyone on this train. The man got on the subway car and began to say a somewhat aggressive speech, saying that he was hungry, he was thirsty, and he didn't care about anything. He didn't care about going to jail, that he didn't care that he gets a big life sentence. And it doesn't matter if he died. Vasquez says he was scared and believes others on the train were too. That's when he says a 24-year-old rider came up behind the man and put him in a chokehold, holding him there on the ground. Two other men standing over them also helped subdue the man. A homeless man with a rap sheet as long as you could imagine with 40 prior arrests walked into one of the train carts and started threatening everyone. I'm ready to go to jail. I'll hurt anyone. So a crazed homeless person walked onto the train and started started threatening people. And so two good Samaritans, one of them being a former Marine or current Marine, I'm not sure, grabbed this guy, restrained him, and put him in a chokehold. He didn't survive. AOC then furiously takes to Twitter and writes that he was murdered. Can we please exit this clown world and come back to reality? When is enough going to be enough? You know, people living in New York City have had enough. They've had enough of crazed lunatics, gang members, violent felons endangering society, only to go into the court system, maybe, in some cases see jail time and then immediately get back out on the streets. This crazed individual had 40 prior arrests 
and made terroristic threats on a subway cart. What are people supposed to do? Simply sit on their hands? Simply let the crazed maniac making terroristic threats act upon them and victimize simple innocent people who are traveling on the cart? What are people supposed to do? Take their phone cameras? Videotape the whole thing and yell world star? Enough is enough and people have had enough and New Yorkers have had enough. The individuals who constrained this man did not murder him. They did the right thing. And you know what? They probably wouldn't have to do that if the city of New York and a especially Alvin Bragg would do his frickin' job instead of politically persecuting the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, for a non-existent crime that he himself cannot define. The city is out of control and these people are out of line, and especially Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in this case. To declare that the Good Samaritan who stepped in as a murderer is so incredibly irresponsible and frankly so despicable. I mean, worst case scenario here, we're looking at possibly a manslaughter charge, yet she goes all the way to the extent of claiming that he's a murderer. Simply disgusting. In fact, so irresponsible that even New York City Mayor Eric Adams came out and publicly slammed her. So one of the reasons that this uh, story is really hitting a nerve is because this man uh, appeared to be having mental health issues. This is something that you've talked a lot about. But I want to read to you, this is a response from the comptroller, Brad Lander. He tweeted this, New York City is not Gotham. We must not become a city where mentally ill human can be choked to death by a vigilante without consequence. There's also this from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the Democratic Congresswoman. She said, Jordan Neely was murdered. What is your response to what they're saying here? Well, uh, both the Congress Congre Congresswoman and uh, the controller, uh, the controller is a citywide leader. And I don't think that's very responsible at the time where we're still investigating the situation. Let's let the DA uh, conducts his investigation with the law enforcement officials uh, to really interfere with that is not the right thing to do. And I'm going to be responsible and allow them to do their job and allow them to determine exactly what happened here. I mean, once again, we know what the problem is. It's as clear as day. We're pointing our finger in that direction, and these leftoids are willfully blinding themselves and looking a completely different direction. The problem is clear. Elected Democrats are simply not doing their job to keep New Yorkers safe. There is literally nothing else that can be said. And the selective outrage from these leftist activists really shows you how dishonest these activist actors are. How many instances instances of violence and even homicide have we seen in the New York subway over the last couple of years. Indiscriminate homicide, targeting random law-abiding citizens. Democrats not only ignore those situations, they actively promote rhetoric that insinuates that it's not really happening and that it's actually just Republican talking points. Republican propaganda about Democrat cities being violent. I seem to remember a case in New York where a mother was walking with her child in a stroller and her life was taken by again a crazed maniac, a homeless individual on the streets. Well, with cases like that, how do you expect average New Yorkers to react when facing terroristic threats from crazed individuals in the subway system? These leftist activists are simply full of it. And I'll go as far to say this because it's obvious and we know that it's true. If the individual put in a chokehold in the subway system was white, Democrats wouldn't say a damn thing. They're the most disingenuous, dishonest, manipulative liars in the political game, period. Absolute hypocrites and the same hypocrisy once again applies. Here they are doing their protest work and their activism work over a black life being lost, yet they still won't say a word about gang violence in inner city communities. These people are awful. They don't care, they simply lie, they misinform, and of course, worst of all, they sow discord and division in society, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is one of the worst offenders. That's what I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know that we'd love to have you here. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.